tape, I guess. That's not what I wanted to click. That's what I wanted to click. I now recognize Mr. Bobolinsky for his opening statement. Should I allow Hunter to give his opening statement first? This is the Blaze TV, and they're trying. And you're telling me, hold on, really quick, gas. You are telling me that the Blaze TV put up this video, a conservative, with the title "Tony Bobolinsky rips corrupts Biden's." at house hearing and he's actually just saying that he's mad because they screwed over America's enemies and they're trying to present that in a good they didn't edit out the part okay I now recognize Mr. Bobolinsky for his opening statement Should wait I hold on Hunter I actually give his opening statement first can, wait can I can I see something really quick Biden impeachment inquiry is there a is there a slated end date on this james comer was named head of the investigations 12 days earlier is there a is there an end do they say like we can investigate for like three months and then we have to give it up or is this just like we can investigate you and try and pull your son into meetings and shit like that into perpetuity until we lose power one sec scrolling through youtube shorts live is fucking nuts <laughs> i'm sure House committee investigations. How long can they go for? Does anybody know? Support for inquiry. Oh, man. Is this among... Oh, this is among registered voters. Damn, that's pretty brutal. Okay. We'll watch. First, we'll... Uh, doesn't appear Mr. Biden showed up for his public hearing, so we'll recognize you, Mr. Bobulinski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, ranking oh, members and members of up. Congress, oh. good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you and present my truthful testimony to the American people. I sit here today under oath for one reason and one reason only. The American people deserve to hear the truth. Though the truth involving the deep corruption of the Biden family, including the malfeasance of the sitting president of the United States, might be raw and unpleasant, the American people must hear it. You're presented here today with two narratives in this investigation. Well, hold on. It seems like the testimony so far has been truthful because... They still haven't come up with any any crime that could be indicted. <laughs> so it does seem like it is truthful. It is truthful. It's just not helpful to them, I guess. A false one being pushed by Joe Biden, a serial liar and fabulous, now under this impeachment investigation for public corruption. His brother, Jim Biden, a 75-year-old man who can't keep his lies straight, including under oath. And his son, Hunter Biden, a chronic drug addict facing two indictments with 12 counts. You also have before you the truth, confirmed by multiple Biden family business partners over many years and backed up by mountains of irrefutable evidence, including text messages, emails, documents, recordings. I am the only Biden family business partner with an impeccable military record. I'm grateful that this country has given me the freedom to be successful. I worked hard to become independently wealthy. I've taken several businesses public sold multiple businesses to some of the world's best private equity firms. In fact, my business success is... Man, you know what? I know that this is like the current hairstyle, right? Like the, the center parts or like the just off center part of your hair. But man, uh, the only thing that I associate that with is like the rich bully character in every, in every cartoon and every kid's show fucking ever. But now it's just like everyone has it. So now I look at everyone like they're like rich asshole bullies dude pretty sure that there were other biden family members that served yes there was he died of cancer Free record i'm grateful that this country has given me the freedom <laughs> to be successful i worked hard to become independently wealthy i've taken several businesses public sold multiple businesses to some of the world's best private equity firms in fact my business success is why they sought me out however what they have done is repugnant to me i'm here today because i'm a patriot and I'm a truth teller. We keep hearing from certain corners that our democracy is at risk and democracy is on the ballot in 24. Yet the same people preaching this mantra know better. They continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. Rep Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponizes letters to Congress 
to try to smear my name Mr. and Chairman. state the cold hard facts Mr. Chairman. in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. I challenge Mr. Didn't Bo die in Iraq? I thought that I thought Bo Biden died of cancer. Yeah, he died of a glioblastoma. Jesus. And that's like a brain tumor, right? Yeah. The most aggressive and most common type of cancer that orig originates in the brain. F. Mr. Lowell, to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an Wait, officer what was, and his father. What? Facts. Mr. Congress to try to smear my name. Mr. And Chairman. State the cold hard facts. M Mr. Chairman. In an attempt to save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. I oh, is that what Jamie Raskin looks like? I feel like I've certainly seen him in a picture or an interview before, but he just looks like I've never seen this person's face before in my life. To save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy. At Navy's elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command, I later served as the, chief's, uh, the command's chief technology officer. For saying, I apologize for the disruption from the... Okay. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. But please, Mr. Bob Litsky, please. Okay. Come to order. Uh, Mr. Bobolitsky, Mr. Bobolitsky, please oh, proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Can well, I Mr. Chairman, if it save his time, but he called members of this committee liars, and I just want to know whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. Uh, do, do the, does it apply or does it not? Should I address? I, I don't They're just fuck it, dude. He's jerking himself off so much. Yeah, no, I know he is. I mean, like, I know this is like a normal thing to do to like disrupt stupid or, you know, if you disagree with some sort of thing, like some sort of hearing, then you'll do whatever you can to disrupt it and make it fucking hard to follow and think it's, you know, whatever the fuck. I just think that it, at this point, do we have, let's see if there's like more, um, Recent polling, polling impeachment inquiry. Washington Post is going to be paywalled. Let's open up three and just see what they have. 47% in new poll opposed to Biden impeachment inquiry. Only 40% support it and 13% are unsure. Let's see here. Oh, this was January 8th. I want to see like re recent. Oh, this was January as well. Fuck. December. Do we have anything from like March? I guess February 22nd is going to be, it's Washington Post. It's going to be paywalled. Oh, well, maybe Washington Post isn't. Like he's supporting evidence. House Oversight Committee, James Comer, commenced the investigati investigation into Biden last year with allegations of high crimes and misdemeanors that Republicans have since struggled to support. 15 months later, no evidence or testimony obtained by congressional Republicans has showed that Joe Biden was a direct participant in or beneficiary of his son Hunter Biden's business dealings. And while some of Hunter Biden's close associates have placed his father in proximity to those involved with some of the deals, undermining the president's claims he was unaware of Hunter's activities, none of the allegations have met Republicans' claims that Hunter Biden's business activities have fueled an influence peddling operation that enriched Joe Biden and his family. I wish that there was like polling of the electorate. Damn. Three stats to show the failure of the GOP's Biden impeachment push. The interest just isn't there. Pew Research Center poll last month showed that just 16% of Americans were following the inquiry at least very closely. A clear majority were following it not too closely or not at all. Positive views of the nation's economy increased, driven by Democrats. That's good. When was this? January 25th. Job performance. Democrats are more likely than Republicans to support efforts aimed at forging partisan compromises. Should try as best he can to work with GOP congressional leaders to accomplish things, even if it means disappointing some of his voters. Jesus. Democrats want are want Dem Democrat voters want the Democrat lawmakers to come to consensus, even if it means disappointing some Democrats. But the fucking six-minute mark for money shot. 
Wait, sorry, I missed. I must have missed something. So all these people are sitting around talking smack, and y'all just pay them for this crap, dude. It fucking sucks, dude. Like I swear to God, I think that. I don't know how much legislation is passed every year, right? Like the tiny little things that nobody gives a fuck about. But I, I feel like if, if there aren't like at least one piece of legislation passed every month, no, because then they could just like name a post office and then go back to this dumb bullshit. I don't know. It, it's fucking ridiculous, actually. Why a partisan divide on the House GOP's impeachment inquiry into Biden? Um, Percent of House Republicans, House Representatives' decision. Wait. Support or approve or disapprove. Okay, got you. Percent who think Joe Biden has blank done things that are grounds for impeachment. Definitely not. Net 21%. Probably not 25. Probably 24. And definitely 28. Jesus Christ, we're so fucked, dude. Grounds for impeachment aren't there. Far fewer support Biden's removal than supported Trump's. Reuters Ipsos poll last month showed just 21% overall. Just 43% of Republicans said they strongly agreed Biden should be removed from office for benefiting from his son Biden's, uh, Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings when he served as vice president. But did he? I thought that they didn't have any evidence that he did. Okay, anyways. We'll, we'll just listen to this. We'll skip past the interruption. Try it. Oh, okay, try. great. I just want to restate, uh, make sure the American people hear all these facts. Abby Lowell weaponizes letters to Congress to try to smear my name and misstate the cold hard facts in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer for over six years in the United States Navy's elite naval nuclear. What's so funny is he's like saying like, I want these people to come and testify under oath, say it on national television. Like all of the people that came out with like strong statements against Hunter Biden initially, when it, when push came to shove and they were about to get subpoenaed to testify under oath, they all walked back their fucking statements. They're like, well, I never said that, uh, you know, I never said that Joe Biden was ever part of it. I was just, you know, I was just, you know, saying things, you know, but like, did he do anything with this? No, nah, I mean, no, we talked about fishing, you know, like your power training command as a decorated master training specialist. I later served as the commander's chief technology officer where I held a huge security clearance from the Department of Energy and the NSA. When I left nuclear power training command. I was the number one ranked direct input officer in the entire command. And then I jumped into the business world and public markets. While I have made a few contributions over the years to Democrats, such as Representative Ro Khanna, I don't see him, but I hope he shows up today. Um, he sits on the Democratic side of the oversight committee. I'm not a political person. I, came, I come from a family with a long history of distinguished service in our nation's military, including my father, both of my grandfathers and my brother, all of whom. Okay, you know what? I changed my mind. I am just going to skip to about six minutes in because he's just. Family <laughs> was willing to die for this country. I want to be crystal clear from my direct personal experience and what I've subsequently come to learn. It is clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by the fam Biden family. His family's foreign influence peddling operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who are seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden and the United States government. Joe Biden was more than a participant in and a beneficiary of his family's business. He was an active, aware enabler who met with business associates such as myself to further the business, despite being buffered by a complex scheme to maintain plausible deniability. I ask this big question. If there's no evidence of corruption here today, if Joe's conduct and the conduct of his family were fully legal and proper, then why are they so dishonest about it? Not just slight misrepresentations of fact, but deep untruths about the entire corrupt enterprise. Hunter Biden gave his transcribed interview on February 28th and lied throughout his testimony. Here's just one egregious example of Hunter's perjury. Oh, did he, did he say that? Sorry. I, it, it feels like he's saying nothing. Seeking a brand being sold by listen. the fam Biden family. 
His family's foreign influence peddling operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who are seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden and the United States government. Joe Biden was Wait, hold on. sold by the fan. Subsequently, come to learn, it is clear to me that Joe Biden was the brand being sold by the fan Biden family. His family's foreign influence peddling operation from China to Ukraine and elsewhere sold out to foreign actors who are seeking to gain influence and access to Joe Biden and the United. Yeah, I think he meant to say two. Yeah, I think that was just a misspeak, Gas. I, I mean, I don't know. I think he meant to say sold out to them, but I don't know. There was something. Did I open it up? Okay, I wanted to see what this was. I see IRI is talking about it too. We're also following some other developments, this time out of New York where the attorney general's office is now making moves suggesting that the state at this point may start to try to seize some of the former. I'm, I don't know what the process is of seizing assets like real estate, because if they were to seize his real estate, one of the th reasons that real estate is so lucrative, right? Is because you do something with that real estate, right? It's not just like the fact that you have real estate. It's that there are going to be people there that like pay rent or or something like that. Like you have businesses that go in there and rent out the space for offices and stuff. Like I'm sure Trump Tower has offices in it. I'm sure, you know, most of Trump's things have have some other entities interested in the um in the sale or in who is owning or has have some stake in the matter. So I don't know what it means. Real estate is based off of current market value. I mean, yes, but why is why is the market value there, right? Is it just for like the building and the building materials and the plot of land? Well, that's part of the that's part of the cost, but it's also what value it brings to the person who buys it, right? So if you bought like uh, you know, Trump Tower, you're also getting whatever, you know, if you're renting, you have no say in the sale. I, if, if it was like an apartment complex, yes. But if it's like several multi-million dollar, like multinational corporations that are, have set up offices in there, I feel like there's got to be some kind of something there that is more complicated than us as laymen would think about, right? Or am I or am I just like overthinking it? I just automatically assume like um when when things get scaled up is going to be out of my wheelhouse. So it's the same deal? Okay, maybe. Uh, I I just assume like I understand that if you're in an apartment complex and the building changes management, you don't have a right to that building and if they want to you know, no, actually, actually, if they buy a, an apartment complex, you do still have tenants rights. Oh, the buyer has to honor the lease and that's it. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. We're also following some other. As you can tell, I've never purchased real estate before. <laughs> I'm poor. All right. Listen. <laughs> for developments this time out of New York, where the attorney general's office is now making moves suggesting that the state at this point may start to try to seize some of the former president's assets if he fails to pay that. But like what I'm what I'm saying is like I feel like some people's thought is that you're going like Letitia James is going to go in. That's the right district attorney, right? The New York Gen attorney general goes in with the fucking sheriff's office and like change the doors and says, hey, sorry, government seizure. Uh, yeah. Predicting the dim algorithm. All the dim mouthpieces need to start talking about Trump having Mar-a-Lago seized. That's all for today. Well, hold on. Mar-a-Lago's in Florida. Can, can they seize property that isn't in Florida? Or, or would Mar-a-Lago be off, off limits? Oof. I, I think that if, like, if they took Mar-a-Lago or Trump Tower or both of those, bro, I think Trump would actually have a meltdown. Like, if they seized Trump Tower, I think that he would lose his fucking mind. I think that he would, like, actually, I think he would actually just start calling for people to do violence. <laughs> you know? I feel like he would have absolutely, like, 
total break from reality, do whatever I can to to fight back, you know? Was James looking to take Mar-a-Lago? Oh, Donald. Link it to me. You're broke and busted. A fraud, a con, a low-rent rip-off artist. We've always known it. So have you. Now America knows it. The courts are shutting down your crooked shell companies in New York. Bank fraud, insurance fraud. You know those are crimes, right, Donald? They're dissolving right the whole on. Trump Organization scam right from under you. Bro, if if they seized his property and we saw similar images coming from Trump Tower <laughs> during the election, dude, I don't know what it would. I don't know what it would do. I don't know what it would do, right dude. From under you, bankruptcy won't save you this time. You'll have to sell off everything. You might even hold on. Bankruptcy might save him for a little bit. All right, it won't stop them from seizing his assets, but it will uh, delay them seizing his assets until he can find some other legal avenue. That's my understanding. But like, I also don't think that he wants to. I don't think that he wants to declare bankruptcy. If I'm completely honest, I don't think that anybody wants to declare bankruptcy lose control of that dump trump tower no one will lend you money donald they won't even let you hand it over to junior or eric never mind Oof. ivanka she hates you everything you ever built was built on a lie you were never rich never successful new york is laughing at you always has i uh, fuck i i mean like i understand loser trump lincoln project but like trump was rich trump is rich he lives in mar-a-lago he owns trump tower okay it, it, it's not liquid assets, but he is wealthy. He's rich, okay? Don't say he's not rich. He is rich. She hates you. Everything you ever built was built on a lie. You were never rich, never successful. New York is laughing at you. Always has. Always will. And now everyone knows it. Broke. Busted. The loser in chief. I thought the Lincoln Project like had a, a massive schism and it like all crumbled around them, dude. We're also following some okay, other let's watch this now. This time out of New York, where the Attorney General's office is now making moves suggesting that the state at this point may start to try to seize some of the former president's assets if he fails to pay that nearly half a billion dollar bond in his civil fraud case. So something that, as we know right now, yeah. he cannot do. His lawyers has, have argued he'll be unable to satisfy that. And, and there's that deadline looming only about four days away. CNN's Kara Scannell is on this. Uh, Kara, what are you learning that Letitia James is weighing here? What moves is she making toward this? So earlier this month, just about a week after the judge finalized the $454 million judgment that Trump personally faces, the New York Attorney General's office filed this judgment in Westchester County. What that means is that it sets the stage or makes it possible for her to potentially move forward to try to seize assets in Westchester. That's where he has a golf course. Also, the family compound known as Seven Springs, an estate um, crossing over three different um, uh, jurisdictions oh shit you know what i just realized seizing assets in westchester if i guess if like the trump organization or the the trump corporation or whatever the fuck um is based in new york and it's all owned under that then yeah i guess it would be they would be able to seize mar-a-lago and they would be able to seize um try to seize assets Whatever in Westchester. Is. That's where he has a golf course. Also, the family compound known as Seven Springs, an estate um, crossing over three different um, uh, jurisdictions. But it doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to move to seize those specific assets if it comes to that. You know, the judgment is also in New York, where Trump has a lot of properties, Trump Tower, his penthouse apartment there, the hotel at the corner of Central Park, as well as the office building, 40 Wall Street. So it's essentially making it possible to set the ground work that if she does want to move forward to put liens on these properties or move to initiate foreclosure proceedings that is in place they are, are, are on notice now I also check some of the county clerk's offices in some of the other places where Trump has properties in Florida in Chicago I didn't see any judgments there as of now um, so right now it looks like the set the stage is getting set to move in New York but of course there is still time although that clock is ticking as Trump is if I had to pick between Mar-a-Lago or Trump Tower I would <laughs> 
are, are, am I maximizing for trying to take assets to pay the bond or am I, am I maximizing to fuck with Trump? Cause if I'm, ma if I'm, if I'm seethe maxing, I'm taking Trump tower, baby. <laughs> if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to, uh, seethe max, I'm taking Trump tower 10 times out of 10. All right. I feel like if Trump tower goes like, I feel like Mar-a-Lago and Trump tower, are like his, his big, his big, um, I was about to say his big babies. I feel like those are his babies. Right. But uh, I feel like Trump tower is, is the property for him. I feel like that is his personality summed up. It has a golden fucking escalator, golden floors and shit. His, his, uh, penthouse suite, uh, or condo or whatever the fuck triplex, uh, it's <laughs> it, it's gold and marble and just gaudy, which is Trump's entire personality just in like architecture form. Dude, take Trump Tower and turn it into a, a like an immigrant encampment or into like a pro immigrant um like lobbying firm headquarters. He gets to help choose what to forfeit. I think that he gets to help choose what to forfeit if he's cooperating, but he's not cooperating. He's trying to haggle. Turn it into the new attorney general and FBI office in New York, dude. It would be so fucking funny. It would be... It would be so funny. Waiting to see. I mean, I know conservatives would lose their fucking minds too. Trump would lose his mind. But it honestly would be the funniest fucking meme, objectively, from any point of view, right? You know, we, we get like 10 years out of this, and we look back and it's like, damn, <laughs> they took fucking Trump Tower, dude. That shit was fucking brutal. That shit was... They, they got him! They really fucking got him, dude. See if the, appeal the, the memes would be as gold as the toilet in Trump Tower, yes. This court is going to allow him to post a smaller amount or allow him to not post any money until the appeal's over. The New York Attorney General's office has opposed that. And Trump still does not have the money to satisfy that half a billion dollar judgment. Boris, Erica? In, in terms of that, right? I mean, Wait, hold on. What is that emoji that you, it, it, you put? Praying hands and then a necklace? Am I insane? What is that? Is the font just too small? Hold on. Can I turn? Wait, hold on. I can't change the font size. Prayer beads? Oh, let's Are see. Are there any other options let's at this hope. point? Let's we know pray. what you're talking about, of course. The 30 comedies that refuse to loan the, their underwrite uh, that money. And the deadline, as Boris point out, is looming. As you're talking about, are there any other options left? So Trump could potentially take out a mortgage on some of his properties. That's pretty complicated. A lot of the large financial institutions stopped doing business with Trump years ago. You know, also some properties, you know, there are questions about what their value is. That was the issue in this whole case that the judge found that Trump inflated the value. So com companies generally would want to do their own homework before deciding whether to issue a mortgage on a property. And also mortgage interest rates are high right now. That makes the cost of doing that pretty expensive. And we've seen Trump publicly state that, you know, this is an expensive of process for him. That is one option. Uh, there could be a donor that comes in last minute and offers to give Trump cash for this. Is he like, here's the thing, like, even if, even if he gets all of the money to pay, like, he's not going to win the appeal. You know? Where are all the super rich Trump, uh, <laughs> super rich Trump fans? Um, well, I, I can't remember where I saw this. But my understanding is Trump, his, his grassroots donations have tanked hard. Where um, one of the things that really propelled Trump to be able to do what he does, right? And just like shit talk everybody and, you know, fight and all that shit with the Republicans, even though he's with the Republican Party, is because he's not beholden to any of their donors. He's not uh, beholden to... Um, the RNC funding, right? Uh, because he always had a fuckload of small dollar donors that were just, you know, basically printing money for the campaign and printing money for his reelection campaign and all that. Um, but this election cycle, um, if you just look at the polls, it looks like the Democrats are completely fucked on the national stage. But 
if you look at the the individual states that actually matter, those look horrible for the Republicans. And the gap is closing with Biden and Trump in the states that actually matter for the Electoral College. On top of that, in, in states like um, Florida, you're seeing in states like Georgia, in states um, that don't have open primaries, you're seeing people still voting in increasing numbers for Nikki Haley. Like, I think that Nikki Haley got like 75,000 votes in the, um, in the Florida, uh, whatever you call it, uh, primary. And she dropped out two weeks ago. She got 15% of the vote almost. Biden has to be careful, though. Israel needs to be put on a leash or they will fuck it over for Biden. I don't even think that, dude. The best choices you have are two fucking old cunts. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I, and this was part of whatever I either read or watched. I can't remember. Um, there, there's like all these little signifiers, right? Like um, Republicans in, in the margins that Republicans don't want still protest voting Trump in the primaries we still uh we see uh uh studies coming out of swing states where people are like you know 38 percent in favor of biden 37 percent in favor of trump right so that's like a one point difference and then there's you know whatever the remainder is in undecided but when they don't give them the undecided option those same voters overwhelmingly go to biden and give him like a, a 52 to 48 margin of victory. And what it's starting to show is that people are ashamed to say that they support the Democrats and especially ashamed to say that they're going to vote for Biden. But when push comes to shove, they choose Biden over Trump in all three of the studies that have been conducted so, though, thus far on, on this issue or on that question. You know, um, I don't. I don't understand, and maybe it's just because like I'm a giga chad and I don't care what other people think about my political opinions. Um, I don't understand why people are so embarrassed to support Biden. He's not a he's not a like. Why are people more embarrassed to support Biden than support Trump? Can someone please explain that to me? Like Trump is actually embarrassing. Trump is actually he's begging for money because he can't get his small dollar donors to give him any money, right? He has a huge schism in the Republican Party that is growing as time goes on, right? When he was in office, he had one major piece of legislation that went through that was like through Congress, right? Everything else he had to do through executive orders because no, he can't make a deal with anyone. He can't get his own party to support his own legislation. He's an embarrassing person. The only embarrassing thing about Joe Biden is that sometimes, there, well, I guess there's two things, but there's only one big thing. The one big thing that's embarrassing about Joe Biden is that sometimes he like fucks up his speaking and he's a little sleepy and he's old. All right. So like all those things together, that's a little embarrassing. The other like kind of embarrassing thing is he said some like really retarded shit about guns. Okay. And he trips. Hey, so is Donald Trump. Everybody trips occasionally. All right. Especially old people. Guess what? Welcome to, welcome to your fucking sunsetting years, brother. Welcome, welcome to the twilight years of your life. You're going to trip. <laughs> but what else has Biden done that's embarrassing? On the world stage, where he's like actually has a strong stance, an actual strong stance against our like enemies on the world stage, where he actually is able to get legislation through, where where he's able to get bipartisan legislation through. Can someone please, for the love of fucking God, explain to me why it's more embarrassing to support Joe Biden? I I. I, I support Joe Biden. I'm proud, okay? I'm not even, like, a paid DNC shill. 
All right. I'm not I'm not funded by progressive victory. I genuinely think that Biden is the best president of my lifetime. I would vote for Biden, but sadly, I feel every Republican down ticket. Hey, listen, you should look at your uh, Senate. Um, <laughs> you should look at your Senate uh, options. You should uh, you should probably vote dim in the presidential and in the uh, <laughs> and in the Senate for your state. OK, Biden's take on fixing the housing crisis in the state of the union was embarrassing. Wait, hold on. Find me the timestamp. I thought that it was like m mediocre. It wasn't em like embarrassing would be saying like, I want to institute like a, a nationwide like rent control program or some shit like that. Embarrassing would be like trying to force like a certain level of rent relative to like the, uh, the rent around you or some shit. I don't know. But didn't he just like give tax breaks to people who recently bought a house or people who are selling their starter houses, like giving them a tax break as well? Pay an extra tax if you keep properties empty for X amount of time. I'm, I don't know enough about the impact that that would have to say, like my gut reaction is like, good. <laughs> That's my gut reaction, right? But my gut reaction with rent control was also, good poor people need to be able to afford rent but then i learned more about rent control but the cost of housing went up in line with the tax break with which one with Under the no uh extra tax on properties empty or oh that's what you would do no more sitting on property gotcha yeah find me a link on that see i don't remember him saying that oh yeah the i won't be a dictator except for day one stances you are promising america tonight you would never abuse power oh hold on hold on hold on it wasn't uh, a first, um, it wasn't a tax break for people buying their first starter home. It was a tax break for people selling their starter home so that it would open up more housing for people to, to buy. Yeah. So I don't know what the effect on the market that will have necessarily because I'm not a fucking economist. Okay. But it, it's, a, it's a little different than what you're saying. As retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Except Look, for? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill. That's drill, not a that's, drill. That's not, oh, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, he keeps, <laughs> we love this guy. He says, You're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, No, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. So that, okay? that, that sounds to me like you're going back to the policy. Okay. He's just so fucking stupid. Trump, please. Oh, hold on. Let's finish the fucking video for the love yes, of God. I'm okay. Be seen if anyone credible is going to do that. And then, you know, he could potentially have a fire sale of one of his properties on his own. I mean, the clock there again is ticking. It seems that is unlikely. Uh, surely Trump's are working behind the scenes as they're facing this deadline. Uh, but, you know, if not, we'll see what happens on Monday. Erica, Boris. Karis Cannell, thank you so much. Let's bring Jennifer Rogers back in. So, Jennifer, Let's say March 25th comes, this bond isn't paid. How quickly will we find out if Donald Trump is going to have property seized? Well, it'll be still a bit of time, Boris. There's a whole legal process around seizing assets. First step, apparently, Tish James and her team has already started, which is to file the judgments in the relevant jurisdictions, but that's only the first step. Uh, and it's even more complicated when it comes to real property because, you know, it's not like Monday you're just going to see a team of sheriffs go up and put a padlock on a building or anything like that. Uh, there's paperwork hey, steps. I said that. Um, Trump may have the ability to challenge some of those steps before things are actually seized. And of course, seizure Stop. and then sale and then taking the assets. So, uh, uh, it will be a while uh, before anything really happens, but I think that the will be, we will hear something from the court between now and then because you know there's a lot of scrambling going on. So I expect we'll hear something from the court one way or the other, whether they send it back to Judge and Goron for some sort of fact finding about what's been done and possible solutions, or whether the court itself will speak. We'll find out. We also, you know, as Kara pointed out, she she went and looked. She looked at Miami. She looked at Palm Beach County, Cook County in Illinois. No judgments entered there. But when people think of the property that Donald Trump owns, the most well known would be, of course, Mar-a-Lago and Trump Tower in New York. Do you see either one of those realistically being seized? 
I mean, it's really hard to say. It just depends on how many assets there are that are in New York. New York assets are easier for the attorney general to get to um, because they're here. They how much is Trump Tower worth? Three hundred million. Hey, with that one, with that one, three hundred million, allegedly. That one property, he could probably, uh, he could probably pay off a good, uh, good amount of that bond, guys. They can file more easily, so I think they would probably start there. And remember, it's not just real estate. Even though Trump doesn't have enough in cash or cash-like assets, like securities, to cover the entire bill, he has some. So you would want to probably start with those liquid assets anyway. Uh, and then for the real estate that does exist, some of them, uh, some of that value is already encumbered in other places as he's taken loans out based on the collateral of those real estate properties. So um, it's not as if you have the whole value of a Mar-a-Lago, for example, even if you knew what that value was, which of course is part of the whole reason that we're here in the first place is that those values were uh, exaggerated. So, um, you know, it, it, it depends, but uh, but we'll see what they do. It, it is a, a complicated picture. I have one more procedural question for you, Jennifer. Uh, there was this debate between the Trump team and the AG, the Trump team saying we looked at 30 different companies. Nobody could provide us this massive figure, $464 million. Letitia James argued back, essentially saying, well, maybe they can't give you all of that, but you can go to these companies and separately they can give you small chunks that then add up to that number. Is that a realistic argument from the AG? Could Trump pursue that? Sure. And, you know, in fact, the one thing that Team Trump did say is, why don't you make it just a $100 million loan, a million dollar bond, and then that we can do. So then the question becomes, well, then why don't you just do two of those or three of those or four of those or however many you can get? Uh, there's there's one of the problems here, and I think the AG puts her finger on it in her responses. There was not much transparency around what the Trump team actually did and what negotiations there actually were with these 30 companies. So it very well may be that there is the opportunity to piece together smaller bonds to make up the whole amount. The issue is just making sure that the people can be whole at the end of this. If at the end of the long appeal, the large judgment is still upheld, then you know they need to be paid. So that's what the bond is for. But there's no reason they can't be a bit creative about how to make sure that money is there. And one scenario, as you mentioned, we wind up seeing a fact-finding mission to figure out just how extensive yeah. the Trump team's research was in, in trying to get this bond. Jennifer Rogers, appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Trump is fundraising, sending a text to supporters yesterday reading, keep your filthy hands off Trump Tower. Uh, so what he is doing, and I just want to be clear, he's not asking his supporters to pay his bond. He's asking his supporters to give money to his campaign, which also contributes to legal fees. Exactly. And you can double dip in a sense, because, I mean, there's a limit for con for, con for contributing to a, a political campaign. There's not the same limit for a legal defense fund. And, and if I may, what he's also, I mean, this is what he does. And right. everybody in politics does this now. He's trying to rile up his potential right. donors sure. to get angry to send money. And one thing that is clear that we've seen really for now more than a year is whenever he is in legal trouble, it has helped him uh, politically. Yes. So imagine the scenario. Um, I heard uh, one of our legal experts uh, saying on our air this morning that, uh, you know, the visual of uh, Trump Tower being padlocked or something and, you know, them seizing property. Imagine how that would help the former president politically imagine how those images i don't know if it would or if it wouldn't i'm not actually sure okay we get it now we're in the analysis home buyers a ten thousand dollar tax credit here's who would qualify okay well maybe he did say something that was stupid okay so he said for both ten thousand dollar credit for first-time home buyers and a separate ten thousand dollar tax credit for current homeowners who sell their starter home in order to jump into a bigger house that could help melt go away ad go away uh in which homeowners who locked in low mortgage rates during the pandemic are in he and are hesitant to move away because they now face significantly higher mortgage rates but the the problem is at the federal level there's not really drone banned you from the discord today why what did you say oh i can i actually just scrolled up i can see him talking to himself wait hold on super curious yeah i i wanted to ask him about this because this is the dictionary.com definition and this is the oxford dictionary here let's just look it gave me the merriam webster oh, maybe i look up definition and that fixes it so he doesn't like the the oxford definition i i don't know what he thinks he's Google removed the economic definition of bloodbath? The original, okay, hold on. Let's go to dictionary.com. Does anybody need a fucking definition of bloodbath? Hold on, I, I'm, apologies for people that are new here. I just want to read this. I don't want to like stream someone else's discord on, on screen because that feels rude, but he, he's, if some other random website does have it, that doesn't change the fact Google changed their front-facing definition. I don't see anything that says 
economic disaster. For context, everybody, just for context, the um the bloodbath conversation around Trump's statement about an economic bloodbath with the auto industry, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this drone tech guy put bloodbath definition in to the Sunday, March 17th. Is that when he did the Trump bloodbath? When, when was this? Okay. No. Okay. Hold on. I'm just, so this was the 18th. He's saying that he took the screenshot on the, on the 17th. I assume this was written one day afterwards. Uh, let's just look up Trump bloodbath. Let's see. Post on March 18th. So on March 16th, that's when he said it. Got it. And he's saying the next day he looked up the definition of bloodbath. Here, I'm about to get banned from his Discord too because I'm going to ask him a question. I'm going to respond to his picture. Yo, I heard there was a fight in here. In here. I'm trying to look into this. But where are you seeing a definition that says a bloodbath is an economic disaster? I see the dictionary dot com definition yeah about the market refinance yeah like the a few mutual funds performed well in the general bloodbath of the stock market is that what you're talking about but not seeing where you see anything specifically about economic Disaster. Okay. All right. Let's get banned from drone text discord. Let's go. Google just quietly changes. Okay. Hold on. Merriam Webster. Let's go to the Merriam Webster definition. I'm curious. Is this that's still there? By God. By, by Jove. It is there. Holy shit. What the fuck? Are you telling me? There's not a top down conspiracy to completely change our our way of speaking and thinking <sighs> hold on one second what is it sell off seized assets and bankruptcy trump's trump options narrow as bond deadline approaches w for republicans is it a w or is it an l that they're trying to sell more conspiracy theories i want to know you know what i want to know like after reading that article yesterday about Russian influence and Chinese influence in social media, when I see pages like end wokeness or like the like really big hardcore lefty accounts, I'm like, I, I wish that I could personally track where this shit was coming from. Sorry, I just heard something outside. Criminal alien storm border, trample U.S. military, break down wall and open invasion chaos. I don't like, okay, I, I know, I know people like to watch me react to videos, right? But, okay, you know what? Do those definition results come from Oxford site? I mean, it looks like this one's Oxford. Let's see, see more. Oh, no, hold on. Can we go to like the Oxford dictionary? It's Cambridge. Let's see if Oxford English dictionary. How's it going, Front Yard Shield? You missed the non-political part of the stream, buddy. Sorry. So if anything, Oxford changed it. But no, look at the screenshot. The screenshot, the first one is dictionary.com. And the second one is Oxford. Right? And they look like two completely different... Oh, wait, hold on. Brain blast. Bloodbath meaning. Definition. They all have this. They have the... Bloodbath. Why is it a child? <laughs> what the fuck? I was not expecting that fucking voice. What the fuck, dude? That's weird as fuck, dude. <laughs> okay, one sec. Okay, wait, one second. They're... Re define bloodbath? I'm just trying to see because this one has this. I think this is doctored. 
how do you get this? How do you even get to a a screen that looks like this? Why does it matter? I'm just I'm just super curious. I'm autistic and I have to look. I have to find out. One sec. All right, different web browser. Oh, that might be a good idea. I'm a little bit worried because I do all my schoolwork on my other. <laughs> Here, hold on. One second. I do all my schoolwork on my uh, other browsers. Yep, look, it just opened up straight to my schoolwork. Okay, let me see here. Bloodbath definition. Nope, it comes up with the same thing on Brave browser. And if we go to, let's try Firefox. Bloodbath definition. Wait, hold on, not Bing, Google. Bloodbath definition. Nope, they are all exactly the same. They all give the option to have it spoken out loud. There we go. So I don't know where this top one is coming from. And see, this one has translation on the side. Webster still has the definition. Interesting piece about bloodbath. Trumpian word straight out of Larry Flint's playbook. I don't know who I don't know who Larry Flint is. Over what their idol actually meant. Context is the argument this time something which Donald Trump has spent his life disconnected from to help reconnect his action to a coherent perspective. I would like to make a comparison uh, to help the macro cult see their way through it. Larry Flint is a pioneer, I guess, in the world of pornography during the 1970s and 1980s. Okay, it's a provocative word. Okay, well. Holy shit, is that Trump's ass? Bro, it's wide, okay? He got dump he got dumpster on him. Okay. Wait, is this uh replay? Did you just uh, wait, replay? Is this you that just DM'd me? Big ass is only hot for me on a woman. Okay, gotcha. I just want to make sure. So if you do define bloodbath, you do get a different here, what's that? I wanna post this in Okay, interesting. I, I want to see what this person, because I don't think that it, Trump literally meant that he was going to do. I, I don't think that he was saying that he wa is advocating for violence, but all these libs are saying that. It shows that it's how you ask Google. Let's see what they say about that. Hey, Dink Brandon, listen, maybe we'll get you unbanned from Drone Tech's Discord because of this, okay? I'm fighting for you, all right, brother? Me and you, brothers in arms. <laughs> okay. Um,. Republican showing Ohio Republicans that neither he nor they know how tra tariffs work. Trump proposed a 100% tariff on t Chinese auto imports. The crowd cheered. I never thought I would see a gathering of Republicans delight and approval of historic enormous tax increase on themselves. Now I have. But also, we don't do Chinese auto imports. What was the apolitical part of the stream? I was playing guitar for like 30 minutes. One second. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for our country. The boisterous adoration of the former president continued. Several national... Blah, 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 blah. It's probably the words uh, meaning arguing over what he meant. Historic First Amendment fight. In 1983, Hustler published a parody ad for Campari in which infamous Christian right-winger Jerry Falwell, uh-oh, recounted a sexual encounter he had with his mother. The ad brought publicity and ad revenue, but it became a more important battle for the constitutional freedom of speech and press. It was a prov provocative speech. Many Americans also thought it was dangerous. No matter the context, I can't, say, I can't think of what the societal value of the Falwell ad was in 1983 or the value of Trump's bloodbath speech on Saturday. The personal value of the offensive commentary is identical. Provocativeness. I mean, yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, you've stumbled on onto Trump's secret <laughs> secret uh, tactics. He's trying to be provocative? What? Oh, this changes everything, dude. This changes everything. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Front Yard Shield. Like, I, like I've said from the beginning, since I heard that while I was on vacation... When someone pointed it out to me, I was like, no, it doesn't seem like he's advocating for violence. Okay. It seems like everything's chill. Okay. I, I think, I think I'm good on the, I, there's no, there's not anything interesting more to learn about this. The, Sup, you beautiful hold on. I want to see the Josh Peck and Drake Bell thing. You're watching the Philip DeFranco show. It is a beautiful. If you guys don't know, I guess like someone put out a documentary about Nickelodeon. And all of the, uh, and all of like the weird sexual shit that the, uh, producer did. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all use bloodbath colloquially, just like we me- say slaughter, just like we mean, you know, uh, you know, a, uh, it's a battle. We've got a fight. Yeah, we all understand. There's different connotations and different usages of words. Um, but yeah, I guess like the Nickelodeon like head producer or whatever, he 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 like constantly had the girls showing their feet and doing weird shit with their feet and doing sexual shit that was like fetish fetish shit but it was through the guise of children media what was acceptable to do to women back in the day these are children front yard shield these are children if they were adults i don't think that i mean no actually we do know what would happen like look at um god uh inglorious bastards pulp fiction what is the director's name i always forget his name i know what he looks like what the fuck is his name Quentin Tarantino, thank you. Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish. He inserts himself and does cameos in a lot of his movies where women put their feet on him or do sexual shit with their feet. I I think like Salma Hayek or someone like that, like pour tequila down her, like from her gooch all the way down her leg, her toes into his mouth in one of his movies, right? I don't know what movie, but I've never seen it. Um, I've heard about this. Right, but he has a foot fetish, and everyone laughs about it, and they move on. But it's not acceptable at any point to have children doing fetish shit on your on your TV show. There has never been a point in time where you had children doing like weird fetish videos on on side channels. You know, Dust to Dawn. I would guess. Yeah, I have no idea. I've never even heard of that movie. I, I've seen one Quentin Tarantino movie, I think. No, I've seen two. I think I saw Inglorious Bastards, but I was not paying attention to it, I don't think. Um, and I think I've also seen... Oh, wait, hold on. Got to answer the phone. Hello? Oh, boy. I'm about to get spoiled, y'all. I'm about to get spoiled. My girlfriend is buying me a limerita from the gas station on her way home. Ha, ha, ha. I'm about to get fucked up. Um, okay. Uh, It's kind of misandrous to judge somebody somebody in a sexual encounter when they were raised in a cultural context where certain things aren't boundaries that we now recognize as boundaries. Front Yard Shield, I don't know how old you are. And I don't mean this as like an insult. But if you're like below the age of like 20, right? It is very strange to see 13 to 17 year olds being put into weird fetish situations on a children's TV show. Assuming, assuming that, it's, that that's what it was. Now, I haven't looked into all this shit like super hard or anything, but like, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure that there's been a lot of allegations and it, it, it's not looking good for him, right? It, it, it's, it's not an influence of upbringing. If it was an influence of, or if it was just like the influence of upbringing. Uh, Earlier today we talked. Stop. What video, where were we? Okay. Um, If it was just about upbringing, then I feel like we would expect to see, I don't know, a lot more children's shows with, uh, you know, children doing these sorts of things, but it seems to only be on Nickelodeon, right? I don't think he's that old. And I don't think that there was ever a time when it was okay to put children. Okay, you're you're just wrong on this. I'm not going to argue with you on this. I, I'm not going to argue with you on this. You are, you are literally just fucking wrong. I can't even find shit on bloodbath being changed. Yeah, because I think it's just a right-wing conspiracy. Because they're trying to say that the corpos are controlling us. Beautiful, actually. One second. Set documentary. Which, you know, we talked about a few days ago. The, the doc explores the horrific things that allegedly went down behind the scenes at Nickelodeon. Are we talking about sexism, racism, child actors being put into inappropriate situations, making inappropriate jokes, and in the worst instances, working with child predators? The Drake Bell there notably coming forward as a survivor and saying that he was the victim of a dialogue coach who was previously convicted of sexual assault. So understandably, that's been one of the most talked about aspects. But also with that, Josh Peck has gotten some backlash for not publicly addressing it. People saying that he should 100% speak out since he was Drake's co-star on Drake and Josh. Right, so there was no shortage. Bro, I feel bad for Josh Peck, okay? Because everyone wants Drake Bell and Josh Peck to be best friends, but Josh Peck had a career after Nickelodeon and Drake Bell didn't. They grew apart and they are no longer like close buddies. And everyone's like trying to like 
force a, a friendship where there is not one. It's Richard this is this is for his... stop, stop. This is parasocial behavior right here, guys. Silence. You know, you also had others looking at his latest TikTok because it was posted after the documentary aired. Many think Josh was insulting Drake, which in that, notably, he didn't actually address him in the video at all. Instead, it was just him doing a lip dub video to an audio that said, If I haven't talked to you since 2023, take that as a f***ing sign that you don't exist to me anymore. Damn, you bug. You got sprayed with the raid. Bye. See you net bar. So he had many saying that it's intentional, that he was trying to send some message. Other people say, you no, know, this is probably just scheduled, it's horrible timing. But also very notably, as people had their pitchforks out, they were storming the castle. Drake actually came out to defend Josh. I just want to let you guys know that um, this is really, uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time. And um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, so not everything is... Yeah, you take that into account, but he's touching, I assume, women of age, which is unacceptable, but you can, you can like try and take into account that. Yes, I 100% agree with that. It's different for children. There is never a time when it was acceptable to fuck children. Put out. I'm, 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 front your shield, do not say anything more on this because I'm not going to argue with you on it. I will time you out. I will time you out because this is fucking ridiculous. You're just wrong to the public um but i just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and um it's it's been very uh, sensitive um but he has reached out to uh, uh to talk with me and and help me work through this and and uh has been really really great so i uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh take it a little easy on him josh then addressing the situation himself on instagram this afternoon Oh, he's probably writing that he watched Quiet On Set, but it took him a few days to process. I finished the Quiet On Set documentary. Fuck, I might watch that tonight. Maybe if my girlfriend's down for it. I reached out to Drake privately, but when I give my support for the survivors who are brave enough to share their stories of emotional and physical abuse on Nickelodeon sets on the uh, uh, sets with the world, uh, children should be protected. Reliving reliving this publicly is incredibly difficult, but I hope it can bring healing for the victims and their families as well as necessary change for the industry. Adding that he reached out to Drake and gives his support for the survivors who were brave enough to share their stories. Also acknowledging that this is hard to relive publicly, but he hopes that it will bring healing and change. But also with that, you know, that's not where the debate on who should be publicly speaking out ends. Because right? if you look online, there's also a ton of people saying Amanda Bynes needs to speak out. And not just on random corners of the internet, like on her actual Instagram profile. Because as you see in the documentary, a lot of it's focused on her career and the role that Dan Schneider played in that. So there, it is very much worth noting that we- Wait, who is this? Brave enough to share their stories. Also acknowledging that this is hard to relive publicly, but he hopes that it will bring healing and change. But also with that, you know, that's not where the debate on who should be publicly speaking out ends. Because right? if you look online, there's also a ton of people saying Amanda Bynes needs to speak ah. out. And not just on random corners. Damn, Amanda Bynes looks different, bro. The Amanda show was so long ago. I know people change over time. That does not look like the same human being. There's the internet, like on her actual Instagram profile. Because as you see in the documentary, a lot of it's focused on her career and the role that Dan Schneider played in that. So there, it is very much worth noting that we don't really know many details of anything that did or did not happen there. Though there is no shortage of people filling in the blank. And so that's also part of the reason why we saw so many people out speaking in support of Amanda. People saying things like, there's a reason why she's not commenting on it. Perhaps not everyone wants to be forced to talk about the most traumatic experiences of their lives. As well as a reminder that Amanda Bynes doesn't owe anyone an explanation. Stop harassing her to speak up on her traumatizing childhood. She deserves to live a peaceful adulthood. Also, while we're seeing that playing out, there are other debates happening online about footage that was included in the documentary. Because the documentary actually included tons of clips from the Nickelodeon shows and web series where actors were doing jokes that sexualized them. Which is why you had places like IndieWire asking that if in doing this, the documentary just recirculated the exploitative material it was meant to stop. Saying that it inadvertently raises an important ethical conundrum. In the name of exposing and confronting objectionable material, is it acceptable to air it again, even in documentary? Very notably, there you have Alexa Nicholas, who was actually on Zoe 101 and has since become an activist against child predators and entertainment, speaking to the outlet, saying it's a complicated question. I don't like that footage and I don't think it should exist. It who who is she in Zoe 101? I, I don't remember any of these fucking actors, dude. But one and has since become an activist against child predators. And I used to watch all these shows back when I was a kid. Um, me and my girlfriend talked about it a little bit, and um, it, it Sieg. <laughs> bloodbath. What happens to my brain cells when perpetual victims need to validate their depressingly sad worldviews? We obviously changed the definition of a word being used in a colloquial, figurative way. Jesus, why would they do this? Why would they do this? Bro! <laughs> okay. 
Damn it. Speaking to the outlet, saying it's a complicated question. I don't like that footage, and I don't think it should exist. I don't remember any of these shows. I don't know what they play over in Australia. When I was watching, uh, we, oh, I was going to say, like, me and my girlfriend were talking about this. Like, when I was watching these shows when I was a kid, okay? Oh, wait, look at the pronunciation. Uh, when, when I was uh, talking to my girlfriend about this, like, she said that she never found those things. She always found the, the weird, like, feet jokes in kids' shows, like, weird. I, I don't think that I ever found them, like, particularly funny. Because on one hand, you can look at, you can look at these things, right? You can look at these things and you can um, say, okay, well, these things are made for kids' shows in, like, uh, you know, after having, like, years of experience in the real world and you know that people have, like, weird fetishes and stuff, it, it becomes um, more weird to look at these things because some people might get off to it. Um, but maybe it actually is just, like, super innocent. I haven't seen the documentary. It seems like it's pretty fucking bad, you know? Were the girls with their feet under 16? Yes, absolutely. Um, like, they look like children, okay? I mean, it was fucking, uh, what's her name? A Ariana Grande, right? Back in, like, 2011 or 2010. Like, she was a child, all right? But, what, what was that? Oh, yeah. But, like, I, I feel like there are two different ways that you could look at this. Right. When it comes to like the, the stuff that happened on set, like or on the show, the stuff that got aired. I don't know what happened behind the scenes or what happened on the set that got cut from the shows. Um, but there are like two different things that you can two different ways that you can look at the the things that happened on the show. Um however, given the the context of everything else plus the stuff that was aired on the show, I think it's really hard to um, to say that it wasn't unacceptable. This It never should have been created. But then adding, at the same time, I think when you do show the material that Dan made, it does hit a little bit differently. And I feel like the documentary creators knew that the combination of the testimony and the actual footage itself would be most powerful back to back. But an important thing that she also added is that if someone from those clips said, hey, please stop recirculating these, we should respect their wishes. And personally, I find myself agreeing with Alexa, but also understanding that it is a, it's kind of a morally messy question because I see why those clips are included. You hear about the story, you're like, that sounds pretty fucked up. You watch the videos, you go, oh, this is undeniable. Or the footage was already public. I mean, it was on national television. And now what we're seeing is all the context and all the behind the scenes stuff that's associated with it. And I also agree with Alexa that if any of the victims here don't want this footage out there, then yeah, let's, let's pull it. And all that ends up kind of being clean there is still like the the morally here, here's a hypothetical if we found out that ariana grande was very uncomfortable did not there was a joke where someone would give people pickles and people would moan and be really enjoying the pickles and the pickle guy was a creep that happened okay it, that's mad tv we're talking about nickelodeon all right shit that you're supposed to watch as a child with child actors you know not like that these clips of her were clean, there is still like the, the morally, here, here's a hypothetical. If we found out that Ariana Grande was very uncomfortable, did not like that these clips of her were resurfaced, even if it was to help expose a Dan Schneider, do you or do you not have an issue with it being included in the documentary? And I really love to know your thoughts and feelings and opinions on that. And then Planet Fitness has found itself in a bit of a controversy, but they're all starting from this one woman's complaint on Facebook. I just came out of Planet Fitness and um, there is a man shaving in a women's bathroom. I realized- uh Oh, I'm about to get canceled, guys. He wants to be a woman. He gets to be a woman. I love him in Christ, but I'm not comfortable with him shaving in my bathroom. I took a picture of him and I asked him, why are you there? And oh, what did she say at the beginning man. here? Controversy. But it all starting from this one woman's complaint. I haven't seen the video. I've only seen the screenshot of the person. On Facebook. I just came out of Planet Fitness and um, there is a man shaving in a women's bathroom. I realize he wants to be a woman. He gets to be a woman. I love him in Christ, but I'm not. Oh, okay. Then yeah, no, I'm. I'm gonna get giga canceled because I don't think this woman did anything fucking wrong. Comfortable with him shaving in my bathroom. I took a picture of him and I asked him, "Why are you there?" And he justified by saying, "I'm queer, LGB." Well, I left. So apparently, the person that she's talking about is a trans woman. There are photos of this person online. I won't be showing them in this video because they were taken in the privacy of a locker room. But they are. No, someone, someone, get me a picture. Someone, get me the picture. Hold on, I'll find it. Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness trans. Don't take photos in a bathroom, you freaks. Okay, hold on. Open image and new tab. Damn, it's tiny as fuck. Open image and new tab. Okay, that one's bigger. Okay, this is going to be my fucking cancellation moment, okay? Um, I'm sorry. I think that trans women should be allowed to go into women's locker rooms. I do think, I do think that 100%. But also, I, I'm, I don't understand the... Let me pick my words very carefully here, okay? As a as a 
very staunchly pro-trans advocate, okay? I'll make it very clear, I support trans issues. However, bro, there is something, there is something to be said about passing when it comes to public appearances of trans people, right? Um, if you're going to go into a women's bathroom, if you're trying to look like a woman and everyone can tell that you're trying to, you know, that you're acting as a woman, then it's probably fine, right? I don't think that anyone's going to have a problem. Um, I personally believe the modern queer movement involves narcissism. I don't think that narcissism is the word I would use. I, I'm trying to think of like exactly how I want to say it. Um, there is a, there's a push that anything goes, nothing means anything, gender isn't real, but it's also the most important thing in these people's lives. You don't have to, you don't have to pass. You don't have to make an attempt to pass. You can be a trans man and like walk around in a thong and a bikini and with your titties out with and just like look like a girl and be totally okay with uh, or like or like it, it should like people shouldn't misgender you right people should just know or people should ask um but I don't think that the majority of trans people want people to constantly be asking them what their gender is. Because, hey guys, let me tell you something. The only people who get asked, like, oh, what are your pronouns? Are people that are clockable, okay? People that you can tell are trans, all right? Those are the only people. Those are the only people that get asked, what are your pronouns? And that probably makes the trans person in question feel like shit, right? If you're going to go into a women's bathroom as a trans woman, probably don't dress and look like a man and shave your face. Get Demon Mama and our Vivian Wolf on? Yeah. No. No. Absolutely not. I, 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 I wish that I had... I wish I had, like, a, a, a concrete, like, laid-out way to explain this, but... I people look at pe uh, another person, right, with their eyes, and they take in all of that sense data, and they put all of the images into categories, right? And I think that generally, like when I look at like a trans woman, if I'm introduced to a trans woman, even if she doesn't really pass all that well, I can see her as a woman, right? And I almost said something that was really, really going to be uh really bad. Fuck, I'm trying to be, like, so careful. I, should I even have to be careful? I'm on YouTube and kick. Uh, am, am I even in danger of getting banned here? Okay, let's start over. If you're going to go into a women's bathroom as a trans woman, you, you got to, like, make an attempt to pass. And you can't do a shitload of things that are going to make everybody, like, look at you as a man. Um, because it's going to make them uncomfortable. There's a reason why people have always said that there's a power uh, like imbalance between men and women because men have more physical strength than women, right? Like when a woman walks into a bathroom and they see a man in there, they're, they're thinking, uh, what are you doing in here and what are you going to do to me, right? Because it is a space for women to go to the bathroom uh, and not be around men. Now, say what you will about like gender neutral or all gender bathrooms where it's just stalls and doors, right? Um, that's like something that we can talk about, but in like the communal areas here where there's like people getting undressed and showering and shit, I think that it's a lot more acceptable to say, hey, you got to be showing like an actual effort that like looking at you, we can tell that you are trying to, you know, act as a woman and you are not walking around looking like a dude all right i think that that's like totally i think that's totally i think that's totally acceptable right I made a pledge earlier this year not to give a fuck and just speak your mind <laughs> just do it let it flow uh, this is this is me letting it flow parents rupaul in the video isn't rupaul black i'm not going to get into an argument about transition 
and whether that's okay or not. Because I think that people who I think that people should be allowed to transition if they so choose. All right. RuPaul was at this Planet Fitness next to this person right here. RuPaul is a man. RuPaul isn't a trans woman. RuPaul is a drag queen, a man that dresses as a woman, but still is a man. Those are different things. I don't think that RuPaul is in this video. My point, my point is just leave them be. You do what uh, you do, you may, and let them do them. Um, th there's two parts of this that, because like in reality, like if I walked into the bathroom and I saw a chick in there, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't, I, I would be like, oh, this is men's bathroom, but okay, right? If I was a woman, I saw a man in, in the women's bathroom, I mean, depending on the setting and the circumstances, I'd probably be like, um, okay, and I'd probably just move on. I don't really care what people want to identify as. I don't really care if someone wants to be vampire gender, if someone wants to be fucking, you know, deer gender or omni gender or whatever the fuck, if they want to be trans or whatever. I don't actually give a single fuck whatsoever. What I care about is the people that have stakes in this, right? Like trans people who are transitioning, right? Male to female, female to male, right? Um, they get fucked over by shit like this. They get fucked over by shit like this. The optics of it, right? So that, that's one prong of this that I think it's just wholly unacceptable if you care at all about trans people you shouldn't fucking do this shit all right on the other hand like it, going into places you have certain expectations on what's going to happen when you walk into that place right so like if i walk into a bar i have certain expectations right i expect to see drunk people um i have an uh an expectation that like there could be some like fucked up person trying to do fucked up shit to me right i've had people try to do fucked up shit to me in bars right i'm a guy and i have long hair right i i'm like pretty i i i, I yeah i'm pretty um i don't know what it is about me other than that that makes people feel like they can do this but people will just like walk up and like grab my ass or people will walk up and like start braiding my hair from behind while i'm waiting for a drink at the bar you know like i have certain expectations when i'm at home when i'm going to a restaurant when i'm going to a bar and all of those expectations on how other people are going to act how i should act are all going to be different right um if people expect to go into a locker room and not see a man in the locker room while they're getting undressed i think that's totally fucking acceptable for them to be a little bit miffed that there is a trans woman who is not making any attempts to pass that is not that is actively shaving their facial hair in the women's bathroom where 10 feet away someone could be getting like completely undressed and changing their clothes right front yard shield you're just like having the wrong fucking conversation right now we're not even talking about that and i'm not gonna fucking go through your study right now because i need to end stream here in a minute but it, it's fucking crazy to me. It's fucking crazy to me that this is what dominates because I guarantee you one billion percent that there are tons of trans women who go into Planet Fitness that use the women's fucking locker room and nobody gives a fuck. Why? Because they either A, can't tell that they're trans or B, it's pretty obvious that they're trying to pass and they're not bothering anybody else. But when there's someone that looks like a fucking like stockbroker shaving their face like a fucking like CFO of a, a, a company man Shaving his face in the women's locker room, I don't fault the woman for feeling miffed at the very least about that. And even like the, the video, which I've seen for the first time now, because I've only ever seen that one screen cap of the video. Like, listen to what she says. Opinions on that. And, then and um, there is a man shaving in a women's bathroom. I realize he wants to be a woman. He gets to be a woman. I love him in Christ, but I'm not comfortable with him shaving in my bathroom. I took a picture of him and I asked him, why are you there? And he justified. She said, I, I love you in, in Christ. Um, there is a man shaving in a woman's right? bathroom. I realize he wants to be a woman. He gets to be a woman. I love him in Christ. but I'm He gets to be a woman. So it's not like she's being hateful or anything. 
But the social expectations for the place that you're in, you got to be conscious of that. Okay, let's watch the rest of it, and then we probably got to end stream. I'm not comfortable with him shaving in my bathroom. I took a picture of him, and I asked him, why are you there? And he justified by saying, I'm queer LGB. Well, I left. So apparently the person that she's talking about is a trans woman. There are photos of this person online. I won't be showing them in this video. Uh, now, tell me, is what I said right there at all controversial? Well, yeah, it is controversial. But is, is what I'm saying there, like, shitty or mean to trans people in you guys' eyes? Because I'm... I. I have to check myself sometimes because sometimes I feel like maybe I'm being a little bit too dismissive of conservative leaning people's ideas or people who aren't. I feel pretty. Hey, I'm glad. I, like what I, I, I just have to like check myself and make sure that I'm not falling too deep into like bias on one side or the other and just like speak what I think is true rather than accidentally just regurgitating something that I heard someone else say. Did you read my comment? Oh, fuck. I, I kind of ignored chat because the front yard shield guy is going ham. I can't wait till we go to the bar together. <laughs> Bro, you're going to see you're going to see some people doing some crazy shit. Um, I think it's just better to include things like individual changing rooms or seal the cracks in the toilets. Well, I think that they should seal the cracks in the <laughs> in the fucking stalls uh, yesterday. OK, in every bathroom. Uh basic changes we can do to fix this shit how um with those basic changes we could just go unisex because who cares about who they are who they're washing hands next to yeah uh, there have been a couple of times in the past year where i've gone to a place where it was like a completely like gender neutral bathroom and the way it was set up was just like you walk into the bathroom and the only thing that's like a shared communal area is the sink and then all of the toilets are just a bunch of separate rooms like actual rooms you know your bathroom doors don't go to the floor no not in the united states they don't go to the floor or the roof they're about like shin high and then usually they're about tall enough to um usually they're about tall enough to cover me and i'm six foot one a solution uh, should be that they make disabled bathrooms disabled genderless, not because they are disabled. Wait, I, I don't understand what you're what you're saying there. But yeah, like nobody cares who they're washing their hands next to. But like you probably don't want to be. A, at least with like the expectations that we have here in the United States, you don't want to. Have someone of the opposite gender able to see you pissing or shitting or have access to you in a vulnerable position like that, especially for women. Right. Anyways video because they were taken in the privacy of a locker room but they are out there and as far as this woman who's making these videos that's patricia silva she's a member of a gym in alaska and her post actually got enough traction that it resulted in a response from planet fitness but it didn't go really really viral until what happened next because for some context the gym's policy lets people use bathrooms that align with their quote sincere self-reported gender identity the company adding that if it is confirmed that a member is acting in bad faith and improperly asserted gender identity they may be asked to leave and their membership may be terminated so in this case the trans woman ended up keeping her membership because they said she did nothing wrong I'm sorry i, I, I was reading as far chat. As woman who's making see. these videos that's patricia silva she's a member of a gym in alaska and her post actually got enough traction that alaska. It in a response from planet fitness but it didn't go really really viral until what happened next because for some context the gym's policy lets people use that align with their quote sincere self-reported gender identity the company adding that if it is confirmed that a member is acting in bad faith and improperly asserts a gender identity they may be asked to leave and their membership may be terminated so in this case the trans woman ended up keeping her membership because they said she did nothing wrong silva on the other hand they said did actually break a rule because according to planet fitness you're not allowed to photograph or record other people in the bathroom planet fitness ended up revoking patricia's membership and as soon as that news broke out it spread like wildfire through the right-wing media sphere the likes of libs of tiktok and elon musk sharing it to their millions of followers from calls for a boycott and more mainstream outlets like the new york post writing up articles about it referring to the trans woman as a man in their headlines with all this happening we saw planet fitness's stock price dropping so as of recording right now we're seeing a bounce back and as of right now planet fitness has just held its ground continuing to defend its policy against critics but for now that's where we are to wait to see what happens from here right is this kind of a, a momentary thing or is planet fitness about to get the full bud light treatment and then there's yet another reason to not send people unsolicited news something that 39 year old nicholas hawks over in the uk just learned <laughs> don't send dick pics to anyone all right let me see here anything else interesting oh and this is something i wanted to hear about but news of it broke right when i was thinking about going live for stream so one sec now she knows the rules fuck her she signed up saying she won't film people in the bathroom now yeah i agree I, you know, I could be pushed pretty easily on that. Yeah. But at the same time, I also think that the, the, the person shaving their face, they should be, they should be making an attempt. That's all. That's all I'm saying, because it leads to backlash like this. The, the, the backlash, the, the problem that I have isn't that it's, you know, a, a, a trans person in a women's bathroom. Ugh, no, that's not the problem that I have. The problem that I have is, you're, you're actively creating a situation for no reason that 
it, it's not like you're putting yourself in a position and then like you get like fucked over because someone's being shitty um and you use that to like you know like a, a like a sit in or like you know the Martin Luther King Jr style where you like you protest and then you like basically dare the cops to beat you and if they decide to start brutalizing you everybody gets to see you being peaceful and the cops brutalize you and it moves your um your movement forward right this is just like someone being dumb and fucking entitled not thinking of the repercussions of their actions you know I don't care if a trans person goes into the bathroom that aligns with their gender. I do care if they make like zero attempts to, to pass in public and then they like start a moral outrage because of something that is to like 99% of people going to look really fucking sketch. And then it has blowback on the rest of the trans community, right? That's where my fucking problem is. Job. They think it's common sense. And then there's some big allegations getting thrown Apple's way right now. And I have to say, as an Apple shareholder, my baby did nothing. My grandma used to shave. I, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say anything. I might not make any shorts of this. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the problem is that it, it, it's so hard to have a stance on, on trans people that doesn't align 100% with the, like, Twitter, Twitter people. Because you'll just get fucked. Like, I've found that out multiple times, right? I have very strong, very strong opinions on LGBT issues, and all of them are in favor of LGBT people. However, there are smart ways to do things, and there are not smart ways to do things. And if you don't recognize that, then you don't get to complain about, uh, about the backlash. If you're going to do some stupid shit or if you're going to use bad tactics for your for your cause or if you're going to do X, Y, and Z and it ends up blowing back on the whole trans community, those activists don't get to cry about it. The people that get to cry about it are the totality of trans people who are not a part of that activity or not a part of that, um, you know, protest or that... Uh, line of thinking or in favor of those tactics and they still get fucked over it because of the the shitty people that's that's my problem yeah okay this better be super quick because again i do need to end stream here in a minute but that's what i've been saying for years you know this guy oh okay I, yeah i don't care sorry job they think it's common sense and then there's some big allegations getting thrown apple's way right now and i have to say as an apple shareholder my baby did nothing wrong i don't even need to look at the facts my baby boy tim apple is a good boy and i don't appreciate you lying on his name there you make my apple position drop 3.6 percent but i will say joking aside this is pretty big news because you have the u.s justice department 15 states in the district of columbia saying in a lawsuit that they filed this morning that apple has been illegally maintaining a monopoly in the smartphone market a move that some have called the federal government's most significant challenge to the reach and influence of apple and this possibly landmark case comes after years of allegations that apple is engaged in anti-competitive behavior rather you should just hear it from the horse's mouth this is how it hold on ones of apple this possibly landmark Blocking innovative, uh, innovative new apps and degrading how Android messages appear on iPhones to maintain a monopoly on the smartphone market. Yeah, I think that that's pretty shit. I I feel like if you're gonna go after Apple, you well, no, actually, Apple has a monopoly, which means that you have you've like cornered a singular market. The problem with like trying to do antitrust actions on Google or on Amazon or on any of these like big tech firms is that they spread out, right? So they have streaming services and then they have their online stores and then they have their search engines and then they have, so they have a wide range of things, which isn't a monopoly. That's just having a big company that does a whole bunch of things, right? But there's still lots of online marketplaces there's still lots of streaming services. There's still lots of X, Y, Z, search engines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there basically is just Apple and Android for smartphones. And Apple is absolutely the biggest one between those two because Android people get kind of locked out of conversations with people on Apple uh, phones, uh, like the fucking texts versus iMessages and shit, you know? Wait. Hold on, we're, we're going to finish this segment and then I want to watch that. And then we are ending stream. Case comes after years of allegations that Apple is engaged in anti-competitive behavior. Rather, you should just hear it from the horse's mouth. This is how Attorney General Merrick Garland explained it. For consumers, that has meant fewer choices, higher prices and fees, lower quality smartphones, apps and accessories, and less innovation from Apple and its competitors. For developers, that has meant being forced to play by rules that insulate Apple from competition. Right, and before we unpack more of what Garland said, I think it's important to say that this isn't happening like in a vacuum. You know, it's part of a broader trend of regulars that are trying to put a check on these big...
Gatekeepers of Commerce and Communications in 2019 under President Donald J. Trump. The agency's opened antitrust inquiries into Google, Meta, Amazon, and Apple. Apple is probably the only one, like, they need to pass new antitrust laws, but I don't know how you could, in, like, how you could craft those bills that wouldn't disincentivize the business itself, right? Because, again, like, a, a monopoly, you have top-down organization where you you have like let's say manufacturing of all of the things fill color two red thank you so let's say they have the uh, they have the manufacturing cornered and then they have the uh let's say the you know the distrib distribution cornered and then they have the um no green and then let's say that they have you know the sales on these items cornered so you have a top down this is a monopoly right so like the the bell phone company that got busted for antitrust shit um they were the basically the only phone company in the United States. They had access to all of the infrastructure. They had access to all of the, the phone plans. Um, nobody else could really like access any of those things, right? You're going to make some art and paint? <laughs> if you can call this art, then yes, I'm making some art. Um, so this is, that's what a monopoly is. But what we see with like Amazon, right? What we see with Amazon is we have... This square is, you know, the, this square is how much they have of, you know, robotics. And then they also have uh, this, this chunk of their business that is their online marketplace. And then, God, I hate paint. And then they have this chunk that is their streaming service, right? And then they have, you know... They have that chunk that's their streaming service. And then up here, they have this chunk that is, I don't know, their, um, what else does Amazon do? Their delivery service or something like that, right? But because all of these things are, are separate industries or different markets that they're, uh, that they're cornering, there's still competition in all of these different markets. So you can't really go after them with antitrust in the same way that you could go after this monopoly right here. It, it, it just, I, I don't know how you can legislate against this, right? Say like you can only go into three different markets or you can only go into, you know, you can only grow your business to be like this large and then it has to be broken up. Like, how do you legislate around that? How's it going, Abby? They aren't mon monopolies, they're monoliths. I mean, yeah, kind of, but it's a, it's a monolith that we don't have a good answer to. Kind of like how like Citizens United is the best answer to a problem that has no good answers. Citizens United is, a, is not a good Supreme Court um, judgment necessarily, but it is the best of the worst answers that we could come up with. Anyways, developers that is men being forced to play by rules that insulate Apple from competition. Right. And before we unpack more of what Garland said, I think it's important to say that this isn't happening like in a vacuum. You know, it's part of a broader trend of regulators that are trying to put a check on these big tech companies that have so much influence in our lives. Are you seeing federal agencies opening antitrust inquiries into Google, Meta, Amazon, and Apple? Like Meta, I think that you could possibly hit them on Instagram and Facebook because they like. They started like incorporating shit from uh, TikTok and uh, Snapchat and, you know, a million other things to corner that market. You could say that, but way back in 2019, with Apple not being the last of these big tech companies to face a federal law. We're talking about breaking up the banks. Hey, OK. 
but there are also specific things about this specific case that make it a big deal. This case focuses on Apple's entire ecosystem of products and services, rather than just the App Store, which was a case with past lawsuits brought against Apple in Europe and in the U.S. by Fortnite developer Epic Games. Well, we're not going to hit every point of this lawsuit because it's almost 100 pages. Harlan summed up their main arguments pretty well this morning. Apple carries out its exclusionary anti-competitive conduct in two principal ways. First, Apple imposes contractual restrictions and fees that limit the features and functionality that developers can offer iPhone users. Second, Apple selectively restricts access to the points of connection between third-party apps and the iPhone's operating system, degrading the functionality of non-Apple apps and accessories. Not to be a dick, not a great public speaker. Like, I know that's not the main part of the job, but ideally when you're explaining your case, like you don't want people to go to sleep. I feel like I'm in a business class I didn't want to take, but I needed to graduate. G-Dog, this is how I would say Apple's whole system, Apple's whole way of doing business is based off of walls, chains, and weights. I'll even do it without jump cuts because that's cheating. Apple carries out its exclusionary and uncompetitive conduct in two principal ways. The first, Apple imposes contractual restrictions and fees that limit the features and functionality that developers can offer iPhone users. And second, Apple selectively restricts access to the points of connection between third-party apps and the iPhone's operating system, degrading the functionality of non-Apple apps and accessories. Hire me. Actually, don't. People on TikTok already think I'm a fed. But basically what Garland's talking about here, it's laid out in the text of the lawsuit. The first point being about Apple's restriction on cloud streaming apps and so-called super apps being a way to ensure user dependence on the iPhone. The second point being about Apple's restriction of third-party access to things like the iPhone's payment chip as a way of hamstringing alternative messaging, smartwatch, and digital wallet technology. Right? And so with that, one of the arguments that Apple typically makes here in defense of all these policies is that they're a way of making iPhones more secure than other smartphones. And in fact, a spokesperson said just that in a statement this morning, saying the lawsuit threatens who Apple is as a company and adding that if successful, it would hinder Apple's ability to create the kind of technology people expect from where hardware, software, and services intersect. Though notably, with all this, like, we're not going to see a resolution for years probably. And at this point, it's unclear exactly how this lawsuit affect Apple or consumers. Force changes, fines, a public spanking of Tim Apple. Also, yes, I know his name's Tim Cook. Let me have this. But for now, we'll have to wait and see what happens beyond. Oh, good, it's down 3.6. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Philip DeFranco is a little annoying. We we get that. All right, last video. Chances should they vote for this? Under no circumstances should House Republicans vote for this bill. It busts the spending caps, funds the FBI headquarters, doesn't secure the border. Wait, what does this have to do with gas? You said Sansol is moving out of Texas because they banned porn. This video isn't about porn, is it? They should call their uh, members of Congress right now. They should tell them that under no circumstances should they vote for this bill. They should melt the phone down uh, and mo melt down the, the phone lines and the emails and the texts and all of that. Uh, and I mean that. I mean that today. Call today and make sure every... It busts the spending caps, okay? Funds the FBI headquarters, okay? Doesn't secure the border. There's another, there's another bill on the floor that you guys could vote for, but you guys are refusing to. Funds the World Health Organization. That's a good thing. Every member of Congress feels the pain. Oh. That Earmarks in it for abortion facilities. That they should not vote for this bill. And if we can somehow stall this bill out today, if because it's going to take, it's being put I'm about to get suspension high suspension of the rules, which, by the way, is a travesty. It's being put up with less than 24 hours to read it, which is a travesty. It that, that shouldn't be allowed, I don't think. That's something I'll agree with them. They should be given at least 48 hours. It busts the cap. No, they should be given ample, ample time to read the bill. Which is a travesty. Funds the FBI headquarters, doesn't secure the border, funds the World Health Organization. I can keep going. Earmarks in it for abortion uh, facilities uh, in the Northeast. I mean, just, uh, just total abomination. We should oppose it. It takes two-thirds of the House to pass it. So all we need is about a half of Republicans, give or take. It might take a little bit more than that, but you know, three quarters of Republicans to oppose it. And we can kill it. So we should rise up and say, Mr. Speaker, no deal. Republicans should feel the pain for voting for this bill. All right. I love you guys very much. I'm tired. I need to eat. I have a girlfriend downstairs. She brought me a large alcoholic drink. I'm very ready for that. Um, so I'm going to raid you guys out. Um, JSTOC is live, so I'll be sending you guys over to him. Yeah, I don't have anything else. I'm tired as fuck, okay? Love you guys very much. Porn story, well, link, send me that in DMs, because I'm just curious. What are you drinking? I have no idea. I told my girlfriend to get me a Limerita just for the memes, but it looks like the they didn't have Limeritas there. Tell her I said hi. I will, Abby. All right. I love you guys very much. It has been a fun stream. I will catch you guys mm, probably not until... Probably not until Monday, but it's possible. It's possible I stream tomorrow, but I don't know if I will. But yeah. Anyways, rating guys into JSTOC. I love you guys very much. Catch you guys next time.